Hello, my name is Wajaha and today I'd like to go over Kawasaki disease. So this is a condition also known as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome, but what exactly is it? So from what we know, it's a medium-sized vasculitis. Now if I take the word vasculitis and split it up, vascule refers to blood vessels, itis refers to inflammation. So what we know is that this is an inflammatory condition affecting blood vessels. Now, Kawasaki's disease does have some serious complications, and I'll get onto them later. So people of all ages can be affected by this. Commonly it's children, and these are usually quite young, under the age of five. As well as that, it's a leading cause of heart disease in children. Now, the cause of this condition is not fully understood. Research is ongoing. What we do know is that it's more common in children from North Northeast Asia especially Japan and Korea, so there may be some sort of genetic link, but currently we're not too sure. Moving on to the signs and symptoms, main one being a fever. This is a continuous fever that lasts for at least five days. By continuous fever, it means these children will have fevers on day one, two, three, four, and five. As well as that, they can get edema, usually of the hands and the feet, you get a rash on their trunk which is quite erythematous conjunctivitis which is usually bilateral but is most of the time quite mild and also what we call a strawberry tongue appearance the, the tongue appears quite bright red and is often linked with mucositis which is inflammation of the mucous membranes as well as that you can often get cracking of the lips cervical lymphadenopathy is often painful and these nodes are larger than 1.5 centimeters. Some people may also get arthralgia, which is pain in the joints. So how do we remember this? I've come up with a way for you guys to try and remember this all. So looking at this picture, you can see some strawberries and some cream, and you might be thinking, what does that even mean? This mnemonic that I have is called warm cream. Let me break it down to you. So warm refers to fever, and if you break down cream, C for conjunctivitis, R for the rash that you get on the trunk, E for edema or the extremities, the hands and feet, A for adenopathy as in lymphadenopathy, and M for mucositis, and you can link this to the strawberry tongue like you can see in the picture. I hope that helps. So, moving on to the investigations, as with any child coming with a fever, there are a number of investigations that you might want to do, but here are some important ones that you should look at. So looking at the full blood count, you can sometimes see what we call a normocytic anemia. And in addition to this, when the disease starts, the platelet count is often normal, but as the disease progresses, the platelet count can often rise and you can get a thrombocytosis. If you do a CRP, you can see that this may be elevated. And there's two other tests, an echo and an ECG, that are really, really important to do, even as a baseline test. And I'll go into more detail about why that is later. Moving on to the complications. As I mentioned earlier, Kawasaki's disease is the leading cause of heart disease in children. And this is why. So... They often get coronary artery aneurysms 10 days after the onset of the illness. But as well as that, they can get other cardiac complications, but these ones occur slightly earlier. These complications involve MIs, arrhythmias, peripheral artery occlusions and heart failure. And so it's really important that we do those baseline tests that I, did, that I mentioned earlier, the echoes and ECGs. It's also important to mention that 25% of untreated patients get some sort of heart complication. How do we diagnose this condition? So the main symptom that we must have is a fever. It must be a continuous fever as well. And then you need to have four of the following five. And the five are from the mnemonic, the cream section. So conjunctivitis, the rash, edema, lymphadenopathy, and the mucosal involvement. Now, 
You can also get diagnosed with this if you've got a positive echo with less than four features. There's also something called incomplete Kawasaki disease, and that's having a fever with less than four of these five criteria and also having a raised CRP. Moving on to the treatment now. So this condition is treated with two main things, IV immunoglobulins and aspirin. Now I've written here that you need to assess for resistance and that's assessing for immunoglobulin resistance. And there's a specific criteria that they need to follow. If they, this child or this patient is at high risk of immunoglobulin resistance, then you need to give them some glucocorticoids. Now, you might also be thinking as well, aspirin in a child, that doesn't sound right. But this is one of the few conditions that aspirin is given to a child. Now, normally it's not given because of something called Reiser's syndrome and that's a condition caused by aspirin it's a complication of aspirin it can cause encephalopathy now it's also important to know that this often happens after an influenza infection and so we also try to give an influenza vaccine to try and reduce the risk of that i hope that makes sense lastly moving on to a question so a five-year-old boy is brought to the clinic because of a fever for five days and a sore throat and malaise. The mother tells you that he is usually a very healthy child and he is up to date on all of his immunizations. Besides the mother, he lives at home with an older brother and sister, neither of whom are sick. His temperature is 39.5 degrees. On examination, he has a peeling rash on his extremities, one two centimeter lymph node on the right anterior cervical chain confluent truncal rash and mild conjunctivitis. Appropriate management is taken. The most important long-term management of this child is. So we know that this is a young child, a five-year-old boy. He's had a fever of 39.5 degrees for five days. He's also got a peeling rash on his extremities. He's got um, a lymph node greater than 1.5 centimeters. He's got truncal rash and conjunctivitis. So we know that he ticks four of the five criteria and therefore he has Kawasaki disease. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Kawasaki disease is the leading cause of heart disease in children. And I mentioned earlier, it's really, really important to do the echoes and ECGs to make sure that there's no heart complications. Now, if we look at the options here, it means that the only answer viable is B. So you must be doing you must do echocardiograms to look for coronary artery aneurysms. That's all I wanted to go through today. Thank you very much. Um, please leave a comment, leave a like and subscribe. Thank you.